everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to share with you this Galaxy Sky painting tutorial in watercolors. So I'm going to be using the Daniel Smith watercolors for this. I don't get to use these often enough and I really do enjoy them. Uh, all but one. I'm actually going to be taking phthalo green from M. Graham because I just don't have a phthalo green in the uh, Daniel Smith watercolors. But I'm going to be using permanent rose, which is PV19, phthalo blue, PB15, um, and phthalo green. I think that's it. Yes, that's it. Just three colors. Wow, I surprised myself there. And I'm also going to be using some white gouache toward the end. This is the Winsor & Newton Designers gouache. I'm also going to be using some salt for this painting. I've got the coarse grind kosher salt here as well as some ultra fine salt and I'll be using a little bit of both for this painting. And I've got a half inch Princeton Neptune oval wash or cat tongue brush here. Now if you just have a large round, that's absolutely fine as well. Use what you have. Optionally, you can use this Winsor & Newton iridescent medium. It's a really great iridescent medium for special effects. I like it because it's a kind of silvery white pearly sparkle medium and it's really really pretty. I think it would go amazing with this sky if you wanted to have a little bit of extra sparkle especially if you were doing this on like a watercolor greeting card and you, it was going to be moved in the light quite a bit. I think that would be a nice touch but enough talking why don't we just go ahead and get started. I also wanted to mention really quickly that I do have a full review up on the channel on the Daniel Smith watercolors if you guys are interested. So I'll leave that linked up in the iCards in the description box down below as well as I have a full review on this watercolor sketchbook, this DIY watercolor sketchbook. It's an easy tutorial to follow, no book press, no sewing, no binding. So go ahead and check that out if you guys are interested. But this is the Arches Rough press 100% cotton watercolor paper that I have on this page here that I'll be working on today. If you don't have this paper, don't worry about it. Use what you have. If you have the Strathmore um, 400 series, cold press, use that. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, this is absolutely a beginner style tutorial. So use what you have, but I do think that I really like it on the rough press. So I'm starting off, I'm just going to wet my background. And you can use some acid-free artist tape to go ahead and wet, um, I mean to tape down all four edges, excuse me, if you would like a nice clean border. I've been enjoying a rough kind of mottled or deckled edge lately in some of my watercolor work, so that's what I'm going to be doing. But you do whatever you enjoy. So I'm wetting that out. So I'm going to wet the background pretty well. It's 100% cotton paper, so it should stay wet long enough to blend into it and do what I want. Notice I have a paper towel underneath the page. That's because whether you're working in a homemade sketchbook or any sketchbook, any watercolor sketchbook, I think it's important to put that paper towel there because the page will get damp underneath if you don't to some degree. I'm dropping in some phthalo blue just to begin. This is the pure phthalo blue. Lesser and less as I get toward the center. Let's see. I'm just going to start off blocking that in. And I feel like it's important to have that paper towel there because as the paper gets damp underneath, you know, it can affect the sizing over time, I think. So now what I've got here is I've got a mixture of the phthalo blue with just a tiny bit of the rose in it. It's going to be darker. It's not really an ultramarine, I mean it's close, but it's more kind of like an anthracrinone blue because it's a little bit um, neutralized, just a tiny bit, and I like it a lot. 
I want that predominantly going across the edges because I think that it's a nice kind of vignette type effect. Okay. Got that. I might put a little like that. And I'm going to take, I want something to brace against here. Oh, I have. I just want to add some spatters right into the wet wash. There we go. There it is. I love that. Having a little Jackson Pollock moment there. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take some of the Permanent Rose. I love Daniel Smith's Permanent Rose. It's perfect for what I want to do here. I mean, just perfect. And one of the great things about this painting that I really think makes it so beginner friendly is that you're really not in danger of mixing mud here because all of these colors go together you know they're all gonna it, when they mix they're gonna mix something fresh and lovely you know so you really aren't in any danger there I've got some purple kind of here putting some of that in take that purple and again just spatter because I think that's a nice effect More of that kind of dark indigo blue. I really want this area nice and saturated with it. We'll come over and do some glazing after this first wash has been allowed to dry. So not too much have to worry, but still want to get some saturation there. All right, now I'm going to take some of that phthalo green and I'm going to add a little bit of that in. And you'll see that even as that neutralizes out with the other colors in the painting, it's still looking very spacey. And it's it's not it's not unpleasant. It's really not. All right, so I'm going to take a crumpled up paper towel and I'm going to kind of start to come in here and lift some little shapes out like that. Try and make it somewhat random. And I'm not lifting out I'm not lifting out too much color because watch what I'm going to do in a minute. So I'm going to come in now with some coarse grind kosher salt and I'm going to kind of just follow that little pattern that I just made. So I want, I'm not just sprinkling it haphazardly all over. I kind of want to make little like, oh, what would you call it? little nebulas kind of like I'm just little little streaks of stars little little pathways if you will forgive me for not having the word but I just want to make little kind of pathways in there little streams of stars okay so I've done that and then I want to just go ahead and sprinkle a tiny bit of the finer salt in there as well. And that I'm just sprinkling a little bit kind of all over. But very lightly, I don't need a lot of that. And I'll take a couple of those granules of the coarse grind salt and maybe very strategically place a couple, but I mean like one granule 
because that gets a different effect. If you just kind of sprinkle it all over, I'll show you in a moment what that would look like, but it it's not as, um, what would you say? It's, it's, it's a little bit um, too much chaos, I think, in my opinion. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna, I feel like I wanna lift out a little bit more of that color in a few places so I'm just gonna just gonna do that real quick make sure I've got some light in there some kind of lighter values hmm and lastly I'm gonna take kind of a wet brush a juicy wet brush and I'm gonna just drop some plain water so I'm only spattering plain water and look what starts to happen as that water kind of pushes the pigment out of the way all these fun things are going to begin to happen and because the painting you know it's going to dry on evenly now you get those very attractive cauliflowers and blooms and we'll have the salt kind of in there playing a role in all that as well and especially with that rough pressed paper you're really going to get some interesting effects i think i might take and just add a few more granules of salt to this corner here in a little cluster. And that's it. I'm not gonna overdo too much because I already know I'm gonna get some pretty interesting textures in there and I don't want everything to be textured because then nothing really looks textured. Does that make sense? Be a little bit more salt, but really nothing too much. And, um, hmm. I, th I think that's good for now. I can always add more spatters later. Now let me show you over here what will kind of happen if you texture everything. It's just a little sample that I did. I mocked up really quickly. If you add just all texture everywhere, do you see how nothing, it's just too much, right? Instead, we kind of want to control it to create fun shapes and textures and sort of nebula effects inside. But you don't want everything to be overly textured. So this is how the first layer should look for now. I'm gonna let this dry up and then I'll join you back here to finish working on it. All right, so I have allowed the painting to dry. I've removed the salt and this is what the painting looks like. You'll notice that the colors have color shifted up as it dries. And that's just because as watercolor does dry, the colors will lighten and that's completely normal. So if you're a beginner, you didn't do anything wrong, nothing is wrong, this is how it it should look. Look at what that salt did. I'm so thrilled with how it looks, you guys. The textures, those little kind of tracks of stars that we created, I think that looks so amazing. And there's like this swirl in the middle because the pattern of the water was sort of flowing this way on this one and, and the other way on the other one. We've got this like swirl kind of nebula kind of effect. Again, if you're doing this at home, don't overdo the salt because that little cluster, that little star right there, that was just one granule of salt. So I think it's better to use it kind of sparingly. A little heavier I did there and much lighter up here. And it's okay if your stars aren't 100% in the spot that mine are because it's not going to be. They're all going to be completely unique works of art. That's just the way it is. You'll notice that um, if you've watched me for any length of time that I use salt quite a bit in my work. I enjoy the, the different textural effects I can achieve with it, but even if you're not a water, watercolor painter and you are just an artist who has an art room, it's a good idea to keep a container of salt in your art room and I'll tell you why. Pro tip, leaving a container of salt in your art room is a great way to gauge the relative humidity of the room. Humidity is the enemy of art supplies in terms of shelf life and even the archivalness of your artwork. For example, you'll notice that I had put that uh, paper towel between 
the layers of paper. That's because when I'm doing a wet wash, I don't want the dampness or the humidity to affect the sheet below. The more damp that the room is, the more humidity that your supplies are exposed to, it can cause the sizing of your watercolor paper to go off much quicker. So I want to let you guys know that. So it doesn't matter what kind of salt, but if you have a little container of salt and the, the salt is free flowing in the container, then the humidity in the room is fine. If it starts to get hard and clump and cluster together, you know that it's way too humid in that room. I also wanted to mention that for this painting, you can use ultramarine blue instead of phthalo blue if you wanted to. And especially the Daniel Smiths will really granulate quite a bit, but I felt like it would be overkill and it would be too much texture because you want some textural contrast in the work. So now that the painting has been allowed to dry, I'm gonna go in with that indigo color that I mixed up before. That's just a mixture of the phthalo blue with a little bit of the rose in it, and that's gonna be my darkest value, and I wanna get that in right away, right off the bat now. So I know, for example, that this corner, I wanna have some darkness. So I'm gonna start in and add some of that. And by getting my darker values in right away at this point, I can really start to have fun, lighten up, and really gauge my values. So I'm going to add that in. And then I'm going to rinse the brush off, and here's how I like to blend. Just wet, just kind of come in and soften that edge into the painting. You don't want the, the brush to be sopping wet for this. Just damp and free of color. And I can blend that into the rest of the painting there. If it's too wet, you're gonna cause it to push back and cauliflower on you. So I'm gonna grab more of that color. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I know I want a decent amount of dark up here. I really want to make sure I get some of my darkest values in. And don't go completely even. You know, you want, you want to have some fun and do some different things. All right, so I'm speeding up the footage a little bit here for time's sake and also because it's gonna get a bit repetitive, but don't worry, I will be, in, I'll be including real-time clips throughout the entirety of this video so that it'll be easy to follow. But just to reiterate what I'm doing here is I'm adding in my darkest dark, my darkest value, getting that in right off the bat, and I'm targeting that darkness mostly toward the outer corners and to the top of the painting. This will create somewhat of a, a vignette kind of effect that I'm going for, and I think that it's quite lovely and realistic. somewhat securely in place we can start to do some glazing but remember not to eat up all the light area those areas that you lifted out with a paper towel or created with the salt that are very light you don't want to cover all that up I've got some phthalo blue water down here to make a nice glaze and I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna start glazing over some of these areas to richen the colors Now, if you're having trouble getting that dark, dark enough, one thing that can often help, try mixing all three of the colors together. The um, phthalo blue, the phthalo green, and the permanent rose, you'll get a really nice, really nice dark that way. I'm gonna come in and blend that off. Soften the edges, here we go. 
Now, I know it can be a little bit difficult and even a little bit frightening when we're working with phthalo colors because you gotta kinda move quick. Otherwise, you're not gonna really have time to blend because they stain the paper really easily. So you kind of have to move quick with phthalo colors. But if you're working on like a Strathmore uh, 400 series, you, you're going to have a little bit more time because that's a student grade paper and it's really designed to be very liftable and forgiving to students. a very well sized paper I should say. I'm going to come up here and do some more of that. I'm going to glaze a little bit richer of a phthalo blue up here. And as this color comes over the colors that are already there, magical things will start to happen because you're not going to lose the influence of the color underneath entirely. So we can subdue and knock back some of the green, for example, so it's not glaring and in your face but you'll still have some of the influence of that color and that's a really nice thing. So I'm just continuing to come in and do my glazes. I'm glazing blue, purple, magenta, and even some of the phthalo green in some places sparingly. By layering up these glazes, I'm not really trying to cover everything up. That's not the goal here. I want all of the details and beauty of the first layer to shine through. I'm just trying to add to what's already there. By adding glazes, we're not only richening the colors, but we're building depth and clarity of color and dimension. So one of the things that makes watercolor so beautiful and rich and unique are those rich jewel-like glazes that when layered up on top of each other create a brilliant beautiful luminosity that can really truly only be achieved in watercolor. When the light shines down through those transparent layers of paint, bounces off the surface white of the paper, and then comes back to you, that light refraction plays a huge role in what makes watercolor so uniquely luminous and beautiful. And that's ultimately what I'm doing here. It's also going to add to the effect of that sort of infinite look of galaxy and space because you know it's not one flat plane obviously it should look like you can just keep looking into it it just stretches on and on and that's really what I'm trying to build up here that illusion with my glazes and then I applied some spatters with um, the white gouache using a paintbrush and I applied some very fine spatter using a toothbrush. Now I'm not sure what happened to that clip, for whatever reason my computer had deleted it, but that's fine, you really didn't miss anything, it was just me spattering with the white gouache. And try and kind of think about, you know, think about them in terms of little, the stars in terms of little clusters, you know. Think about that as you go along uh, versus just doing a lot of just stars all over, you know. I'm kind of trying to make little star patterns and clusters. And if gouache is not opaque enough, you know, on that first layer, you can always let it dry and go over it a second time, especially if you're working with like a student grade gouache, that's absolutely fine. If you are, you can still do this. Um, 
just go over it a couple times but this little star stream if you will this little pattern here I want to go over a few times on some of them because I really want that to be very bright and obvious that little star pattern hope you guys are enjoying the tutorial so far if you are leave a like please it would really help me out I'd really very much appreciate it little clusters let's see where else would I like one? Oh, and you know what else might be fun if maybe you like you know you wanted to copy the big dipper or something like that and include that into your painting go for it you could do that too I think I put just a few there just like that there we go this painting reminds me of uh, Genesis from the Bible in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and for some reason, this very much reminds me of that. I'm not trying to push my faith on anybody. Absolutely not. I don't do that. If you've watched this channel for any, any length of time, you know that I'm a Christian. But, you know, I'm not pushing it on anybody. But this does remind me of that very much. And that really completes today's tutorial. I hope that you guys found this enjoyable and that you liked it. I think it came out so, so pretty. Um, I, I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it looks so beautiful and I really like it. Optionally, I did want to mention again, this would be the time to add the Winsor & Newton iridescent medium if you were interested in that. Um, because I'm not going to add it to mine, but because it's going to be in a sketchbook and I'm not really feeling it today. But you can water it down, shear it out, and add some to certain areas if you wanted to. Or you could just add it in the stars to make them sparkle. If you were painting this on, um, you know, like a watercolor greeting card, for example, where it was going to be held and moved and turned in the light, I think you'd really like that. So that's just one little tip there for you if you want to take it up that next level and you were going for that effect. But I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up before you go because it really helps out my channel. And as always, have a great day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.